Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In the series of Snowflake certification, today we are going to discuss about the account access and security. This part in the certification, you will see around 20 to 25 percent questions from this part. So this is mainly talked about the how Snowflake has control over the uh, the data and how it provides the security uh, on our data and all the objects of the Snowflake. So basically it contains the compute principles, the network related policy, MFA, federated authentication and SSO. The second part we will talk about how the privileges can be granted and revoked, how the uh, role hierarchy and principle inheritance work. The last part we are going to discuss about the governance capabilities and snowflake and how it affect the uh, all these objects. In the account access and security first we will start with the network security. So in this one snowflake provide the capability to allow or disallow the snowflake access from the certain IP addresses. Okay. You can allow only certain networks from where your Snowflake can be accessed and from other networks it will be disallowed. So your admin can uh, attach some policies to it and allow the networks to access the Snowflake. So for example in or some organizations they have one kind of uh, IP address associated to it the virtual private network and from that IP address we just need to give the IP address of it in the snowflake uh, account admin can perform that operations and uh, it will be secure to uh, use the snowflake from that IP only. It also provides the second level of authentication that is called multi-factor authentication. So multi-factor authentication can be performed by using uh, some third party apps. So Snowflake uh, works with one of the third party app where it provides the multi-factor authentication. The next is federated authentication and SSO. So Snowflake also support federated authentication. That means you can uh, configure other, uh, uh, other authentication method to allow the Snowflake for the users to use the Snowflake. So as we know there are nowadays we generally use the single sign on. So Snowflake also works with different single sign on provider and it allow uh, the authentication can be performed using these third party uh, SSO or SAML 2.0 compliant identity providers. Now we will discuss about the roles that uh, that how it can be granted and how it can be revoked and we will see the uh, hierarchy also for these uh, various snowflake roles so in snowflake privileges also define as the same way we define in other uh, other databases but the main thing is here here the access is governed by the roles so we provide all the privileges and assign the grants to particular roles we are not assigned it directly to any user we, we attach it to role and then that role can be attached to the user okay and how the hierarchy works let me explain you so for example there is one role who's having privilege on uh, object C and there is another role role 2 which has uh, the privilege on object B but if we assign the role 3 to role 2 it already inherit or it will automatically inherit the uh, the access on the uh, object C so that means if we assign some role to some another role the first role who is having the access on different object that objects will already be or the all the privileges on the object C will also be associated to the role 2 in the same way if we assign this role 2 to a role 1 and which is having on the only on which is having the privilege on the object A it will 
inherently get the access on the ob uh, object B and object C and this role can be assigned to the user. So in a similar fashion if you see on the top of the account uh, or the role hierarchy the account admin there is another uh, role called org admin but that is separately and that is only to manage the organization for the snowflake. But here if you see the lower level account uh, the role is the public role. So if you do not have any role whenever you create anything you by default you will have these roles available the account admin, security admin, sys admin, user admin and public uh, public role. So public role is kind of general role uh, which you can uh, see whenever you are using the snowflake. You can also use these uh, some specially provided by snowflake. So for example, in this one, account admin. Account admin has the privileges of all the security admin as well as the sysadmin. But you can see security admin and sysadmin, these two are different roles and it is not assigned to anyone. That means the privileges of the security admin will be different from the sysadmin. Here if you see, there is two databases roles. So one database role is assigned to another database role and that database role is assigned to the custom role. So this custom role will be having the role of both the databases. In the similar way we can assign this to sysadmin. So basically whenever sysadmin creates any role right it is creating sysadmin is creating any role so that uh, object is already having access, access by the sysadmin. Okay, so this is how the hierarchy one work in Snowflake. Now we will move on to the third part that is the governance capabilities in Snowflake. So here is the summary of all the uh, governance feature. So first is the masking column data in tables and views using masking policies. So Snowflake has the masking policies where it can mask the data of certain columns in tables and views. So the masking policies apply on the column level. Then we have the row access policies where we can apply the uh, row level policies so that uh, the data in a single table can be visible uh, or maybe uh, may not be visible to all the user if they do not have that policies assigned to it. For example, in one table Suppose we have provided uh, only the sales manager will be able to see the data from the sales department in that particular table. So for the sales department admin can see the data for, for the sales department only. So this is how in a single table we can apply the row access policies and through this policies we can restrict the data access. Then we can assign the tag also to uh, have the compliance discovery protection and resource usage we can see this by using the tags so it will also be uh, applicable to identify uh, resources how it is using so we can assign the tags to the query execution as well and later in time we can do the analysis like which all queries or which all tags are consuming more uh, resources then we have tag based masking policies. So here they have uh, combined this tag feature and the masking policy. So we can use both together to get uh, to secure the column data. Okay, based on the tag as well as the masking policy. Then we have the classification where we can uh, classify the potentially sensitive data using the classification. Access history. In this access history, we can see and audit the user access history through the account usage. Okay. The next is object dependency. In this uh, object dependencies view, we can see how uh, one object is referenced by the another object. So this is the hierarchy. I am going to cover these all the features of the data governance in the subsequent sessions. So that is all for today. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next session. Thank you.